All right, so this is our regular weekly sync meeting for all those who are, are new. Um, I assume you're probably here because of uh, GSOC. Um, is anybody randomly happen to find us at the same time as GSOC, but not because of GSOC? Um, I would be surprised. Um, okay, so the way that we run this is, and I don't know if you guys have, you might have watched the recordings, but so there's, and let me just fill everybody in here, but so if you go to the website um, the main documentation website we have um, this contact page and you know this is this is all the ways you can contact us which this needs to be removed now i'm realizing um and we have recordings posted of all of these meetings here on youtube um and so you can go through and you can see you know all of all of every week um in case you in case you miss something or in case you you know something right um and then this is the meeting minute stock which is this guy um so uh and then every and this is so time zones change if you can add this google calendar to your your um to your um to your calendar and then and then you will be um you know slightly yeah, you will you will maybe hit the time zone change hopefully we can get rid of that stupid time zone um change um but that's that's not within my scope um so all right um so what we usually do is we go through um everyone's is did yeah okay so we usually go through everyone's um um what what everybody needs to work on or what everybody is working on um right and and what problems you're stuck on and then so we'll list those out and then we'll dive into them um depending on you know what time wise what's going to take the longest so if something's going to take a really long time we usually try to put it at the end so this is sort of a drop in drop out situation um you know if you if you end up at the end of the meeting here like if if we end up with somebody who's got something that's going to take an hour then we're going to try to push that towards the end of the meeting. And then, um, you know, everybody, everybody who doesn't have to listen to that can leave. Right. Um, so don't feel pressure to stay. Um, if, if you're getting towards the end and, and nothing is relevant to you anymore. Okay. But it is obviously a, a lot of people stay for the whole time. Um, uh, if you're curious about what's going on, that's, that's fine too. Um, just, um, you know, don't feel obligated. All right. So, um, I want to go around and do some introductions because we've got a lot of new people here. So um, I will um, start with myself. Um, I'm John. I uh, work for Intel. Um, and so I'm the lead maintainer on this project. Um, and so uh, basically, I, you know, I run these meetings. I uh, do code review. Um, I work on the project a little bit. Um, and uh you know we we're we're driving things forward um so the the project itself as you guys are all probably familiar with um you know we're a machine learning focused project you know there's also this uh, data flow concept in there that's really about you know sort of feature engineering it's got sort of broader applications as well um you know that's that's kind of a an underdeveloped part of the project um the main strengths of the project lie in the the machine learning aspects uh, and, and, you know, one, one of those that's, that's really going to round us out here is this, uh, I don't think Sutanch is here, but, but the accuracy part of it. And so once we have that accuracy part, we'll be really, really well, well rounded out there. And then we, we, you know, we need to think about things like auto ML and, and, uh, and, you know, our data set cleanup. Um, and so that's sort of, you know, our, our picture looking forward on, on the, on the, um, on the ML side of things. Uh, also Yash and I have been talking recently about doing, um, uh, can't like uh, cache data sets. Um, so in providing sources that, that do those um, and and there's issues that describe sort of all the things that we're planning on doing. And, and there's also within the documentation, um, there was a, a news announcement here of, of the 4.0 release or, or 0.4 release. Um, and this covers the, you know, the stuff that we've had in here. And then these are sort of the, the main things that we're, we're, we're looking to hit. Um, going forward before we hit beta, which is our next our next big milestone here. Um, and so if you're wondering, you know, what what are the plans for the project? This is what they are, um, as well as, you know, the various issues. But this is sort of really what we're trying to hit here, um, these, these things. Um, all right. So 
Um, <clears throat> let's go around and uh, we can start with uh, Shaw since uh, we'll introduce everybody who's already here to everybody who you know maybe new. Um, and Shaw, you are uh, to the to the top right on the screen right now that I'm looking at. So you get to go first. Uh, all right. Hey, everyone. I'm Shaw Rea. Most people call me Shaw. Um, I'm a computer science sophomore. I live in New Delhi and just trying to do my best and contribute to this project. Uh, Shaw, can you can you add a little bit about what you've been working on to, to fill people in? Oh, yeah. Um, so, so far, I've been working on adding the Pandas data frame source. And in the future, I think I'll be working on uh, implementing video support for DFFML and hopefully adding a few models like YOLO, I think, and some other stuff, hopefully. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Seiko. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Seiko. I'm a college student from Vietnam. I think I have been since that last time. So I have been wondering in open source community to contribute to it. So do you have ML it on the my shop right now? So in a few months, I have been busy, so I haven't have not active yet. Cool. Yeah, so for me. Cool. Yeah, we're good. It's good to have you back. Um. All right. Let's see. So we're gonna go, and I see you, well, my screen configuration here is different, but let's just keep going down to the right. Um. So is it uh, Sahil? I want to make sure we get everybody's name right too. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, it's, it's Sahil. Uh, I'm from India. I'm uh, currently pursuing my uh, dual degree in IT from Indore in India. And I'm looking forward to contribute to the organization. And I have like picked up a couple of things. And I would be really grateful if you can like show me more about like what I should discover. Because DFFML, I checked the source code. And it is really a lot of things to wrap my head around. So, it would be really great if I get some guidance on that. Cool. Yeah, that is that's the purpose of this meeting. Uh, we we go through and and we we try to you know address things that are uh, are blockers and things we want to understand more about. Cool. And next we have uh, is it San Sanjapan? You're on mute if you're talking. Hello. Hey. All right. Hey. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Hello. I'm Sanjeevan Sengupta. Uh, I'm also a computer engineering undergrad from India. I've been recently uh, started contributing to DFFML and uh, I've been looking into some issues and trying to contribute to them. And I'm currently uh, like studying and learning about more about the data flow architecture and trying to add some more models and stuffs. Yeah. Cool. All right, Hashim. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Hashim. Uh, I'm a senior year undergrad student from Pakistan. Uh, I'm generally interested in machine learning, so contributing to DFML has been quite good for me. So uh, I'm currently working on uh, separating the confidences from predictions. Uh, on that issue. So yeah, that's all about me. Sweet, and and Nitesh. And... Yep. Hi, everyone. Uh, Nitesh Yadav, this side. I'm I'm from India and a finalist student of MSc Computer Science. And I have comp uh, contributed the couple of models to a DFML and also fixed the issues. And right now I'm working on a issue about the HTTP service, right? So cool. that's it. Thanks. Thanks. And Sudhashu, I, I had already briefly mentioned your, your accuracy work, but you want to give uh, uh, yourself a little, little introduction to everyone. Uh, so hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sudhanshu. 
I am a final year undergraduate computer engineering student in Mumbai. Yep. Cool. And then I think uh, uh, um, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, hi everyone. I am Pratik. Pratik. I am from Zadar. I'm from Jadapur University, Kolkata. I recently started uh, contributing in DFFML. Uh, I have made a couple of pull requests re regarding uh, creating of new source and some PyTorch models. Uh, I am currently going through understanding the data flow architecture. Uh, I hope to contribute in future shortly regarding that. All right, great. Thanks, Pratik. Um, Thanks. Let's, is that did, did I get? Did I get? Let's see. Let me make sure I got everybody's name right because I want to make sure that that. Um, yeah, it's Pratik. The yeah, it's a correct. Pratik and then uh, Sahil, right? Or is that correct? Sahil. Yes, that, that's. Correct. And then San, Sanjivan. Okay. Yeah. See you. Okay. All right. Great. Um, all right. Cool. Um, and let's see. So, you know, uh, okay. So the first thing that we do um, meeting wise is, you know, like I said, this meeting meetings open to everybody. We want everybody to join. If you got any questions, you know, jump in here um, and, and we'll throw them on the agenda. Right. So uh, we go through, we put everybody's name and, you know, what you want to talk about. So uh, we are, so Shaw already said today, you know, he would like to talk about um, the, uh, the, the data, data frame stuff. Do we have any previous notes on that? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This, okay. The data frame stuff. Um, issue nine. For two. Okay, great. So, and, uh, let's see. All right, so we're going to talk about this data frame stuff. Um, and then, uh, H. Shaw, do you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about uh, video support and how we might implement that. Okay. All right, great. Um, let's see. Um, OK, so video support. All right, great. Um, and let's see. So, uh, Sioko, you're you're next on my screen here. So, what what did you want to talk about today? Did you did you have anything you wanted to talk about? No, I don't. Okay, cool. Mm. Just getting back in the swing of things. Good good stuff. Um, thanks for thanks for being here. Um, all right. So, and then let's see. So, so Sahil, do do you have anything you had uh, questions on today yet, or are you just just want to? Uh, I wanted to know, like, uh, she was working on Orion model before this, and I, I, I had have to watch that last week, listen. But if there's something, uh, like, I have picked up that uh, issue, and uh, if, if there's something, like, he could tell me what he was uh, trying to just share through those links, so it would save time and get me up and running on that PR okay. cool. faster. Um, let's see, and 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 you know, I'm gonna. So let's see. I think I haven't I haven't yet looked at that one. Um, yeah, and I'm guessing. Let's see. Well, we'll go. So I'm getting ahead of myself here again. Um, while I'm outlining this, but but so yeah, we'll we'll go through and, and we'll we'll get to that. All right. That's probably a quick one. So. Uh, also, I made a PR and which is almost ready uh, to be published. All right. What what kind of PR is what What is it about? Uh, that download progress one. Uh, it was oh, great, great. It's 1039, so I, I uh, did all of the changes. Oh, are you, process. are you, um, let's see. Yes, you are a programmer, long string of numbers. That's what that is. Okay, great. Um, it's like, ah, okay. Right. So, great. Okay. Um, let's see. So, Nitesh, um, what, what do we got going with you today? 
Mm -hmm. I have made uh, another PR for H2O, as you said. Oh, yes, great. I haven't gotten a chance to take a look yeah. at that one, so. For H2. And H2O, and I think uh, this is the reason that why the light GBM PR is uh, still hanging on, right? Mm. Oh, yeah, what was going on here? Oh, oh, didn't we need to... Let's just take a look at this yeah. real quick because this may be something. We force push, change log. Um, oh, we have Himanshu. No way. Great. Hey, Himanshu. How's it going? Let's see. These guys, I think we just need to rerun this. Um, let's let's rerun this and then and, and like make sure because I... I think, you know, and actually, wait a minute, do we need to add this to change log? I think we need to add this to change log. Yeah, I think we, we had had issues with the CI. I just want to get to this now because, um, you know, obviously, then we can merge it um, later while the CI runs in the meeting. So, yeah, let's just add this to the change. Can you go add this to the change log, um, Natesh? And then we can merge it, um, you know, as soon as, okay. as, soon as the CI goes. Um Great, we'll get that done now, finally. <laughs> All right. Okay, sure. And I also made a latest PR, right? So. Aha, uh -huh. yes, and I think I saw that. Where was that? Yeah, so the H2O and then, yeah, the strip spaces. Okay, great. It's not doing a thing. All right. Okay. Um, all right, great. Anything else, Natasha, or is that? All right. Um, hey, so Himanshu, we went around and did, we got a lot of new people here, so we wanted to do, do a little round of introductions. Could you give an introduction of yourself? And, and what you're doing these days? You're on mute, Himanshu, if, if, if you're... Uh, the, the, okay. I'm, I'm, let's see. All right, okay, well, I'm not hearing Himanshu. Himanshu, if you, if you uh, just, just uh, let us know in the chat and, and we'll, we'll, cause we wanna, I wanna get everybody, we're, we're trying to get everybody introduced. All right, um, let's see. All right, okay, so, Let's see. All right. Looks like uh, next we've got Sutanshu. Hello. Oh, hey, we got Himanshu. How's it going? Hey. Hi, John. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't getting the audio and uh, yeah. That's good. Cool. Yeah. Can you? Can I see you... a lot of people here. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of people here. Um, can you give us a little update on on you know uh uh just introduction to yourself and and what you're doing these days? Okay, sure. Uh, so, guys, uh, I was uh, in Pisa uh, last summer. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I've been working with the uh, Currently, I'm working as a software engineer at MathWorks. So, MathWorks is a company that works uh, with MATLAB and Simbling, if you heard of from that. Yeah, so, I'm working uh, there in Python interface. So, basically, you have everything in Python and you have MATLAB. So, basically, my job is to integrate them. Yeah, so like integrating TensorFlow and other things. So that is what I'm doing. And like, I haven't been active in DFML for quite a uh, while, but now I'll try to do a few things. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Great, very cool, very cool. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Um, all right, so, yeah. all right, okay, so Sudhanshu, so um, uh, let's see, um, did you, I think yes. I, I commented back. We had a few more things to clean up on there, right? Yes. So I have actually done that also. Okay, great. Um, let me so, just... Yeah. Sure. just okay, great. Okay, nice. awesome. Yeah, that's all right. Perfect. Yeah, because I just I don't know, there was a couple that were that were duplicates. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, is there anything else you wanted to address today? Um, uh, no, I uh, that's it for now. I I'm, I will be like working on that ice cream demo. 
Oh, right. Hey, that's a good one. All right. I'm excited about that. Oh my gosh. We've wanted to see that get done forever. Um, all right. Update commits an accuracy score. And I think that accuracy stuff is getting pretty dang close here. Um, we're going to want to do that. I saw somebody threw up a master domain commit and we definitely want to get accuracy merged before we do that. Um, so let's see. Um, all right. Okay. Working on working. All right. Okay. So, um, let's see who's next. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, well, who, somebody speak up. Who's, who wants to go next? Cause now I've got all out of order here. Uh, uh Hey, this is Hashim. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, I just wanted to remind you that I'm done with that BR, uh, the one that separates confidence from... Okay, you are done with that? Great. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, do we want to discuss that, uh, the examples that you uh, mentioned uh, that you'll be needing in that other meeting? With the Intel guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, we can discuss. Yeah, let's. We can discuss that. That sounds good. Um, let's see. Uh, examples on. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what? Yeah, because I was thinking that after this uh, BR, I could start working on that. All right. Great. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. Um, all right. Anything else on your side? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. All right. Cool. All right. Who wants to go next? Yeah. Hello, sir. All right. Sanjeevan. Yeah, all right. Sanjeevan. Great. All right. So what do, what do you, uh, so, so what we do is, yeah, just, just what you're working on or, or what you were here. Were you here last? Yeah. No, I was not in the last meeting. Ah, okay, but we had you. We had you a few weeks ago. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Last to last week I was there. All right. What's what's going on? Yeah. Uh, the two pull requests that I made. Uh, the create the creating the hash functions mm -hmm. oh, and great. about the darts model plugin. I want to talk about the darts model plugin specially, and also. Uh, I was working about the, uh, I was like studying the data flow architecture also. So okay. I was working on another issue. All right. Um, so let's see, I, yeah. I got, I was too slow. So and the, hash functions. Oh, sorry. Sorry. And the darts model plugin. Oh, darts model. And was there one more thing? Uh, yeah, so I was also studying about the data flow architecture and working on for the for an another issue uh, like uh, it was for adding section to identify how the data flow should be executed. So I was studying that. Okay. For for adding what to what? Uh, like I, there's a the adding section to identify how the data flow should be executed. So adding the version field and adding the execution field. So I was oh, okay, studying the okay. data yeah, flow yeah. architecture and then working on that issue. Uh, awesome. All right. So let's see. Uh, who do we have left? Um, anybody? Let's see. Uh, who else? Uh, yeah. Can I tell something? Yeah, go for it. Uh, basically, I was once working um, with the PyTorch models, right? When we are actually passing the dictionary object to the uh, PyTorch network class, it was actually uh, throwing an error and the dict was not converted to a neural network sequential model right uh, for that i actually created a peer and i think i need to share my screen after some time to actually show what that error is actually coming up is this Maybe this I guy yes yes this one 
Okay. And so this is, is this in the process of fixing that one issue? Um, uh, actually, that issue is being fixed. That is, uh, at first we are converting the dict object into a neural network object. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if we get if we get the neural network object, then we can actually pass into the train high level API, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then actually the train will be successful. Else, actually we are facing this error. This not being converted. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, and I think, okay, great. Um, let's see. And uh, also, uh, and also I created a PR regarding the Excel assets. Ah, I saw that, yeah. And regarding that, I was actually facing an error uh, in the plugin section because I actually don't get that error. I'm just uh, same, attaching the link here. Uh, it's actually showing the a new plugin is not being identified or so. Oh, this guy. Okay, yeah. Well, we'll take a look at this. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um. Um. Uh, for. All right, so, and right now I'm going to say, you know, we're already at, at, at 40 minutes past the hour, so I'm going to say there's some of these that are definitely going to go offline, um, and offline meaning uh, we're not going to do them in this meeting. Um, so let's see, and not, not just yours, everyone's. Um, so I will, I will let everyone know what those are. So anything else, uh, Pratik? Uh, no, and uh, another thing in the uh, in the recent issue means we were uh, where we were supposed to means validate the commit messages. Ah, right? uh -huh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, in the doc section, we are having uh, we are having the formats which actually specified the uh, means files which we are changing. Right now, if suppose a user is having ten commits, then Having the same type of commit name maybe means maybe ineffective in telling means actually this is the syntax of the commit message that is source CSV and parser due to the separator. Yeah, so so um, so the the rationale behind this is is and so so submodule files for description. So um, mm -hmm. so the idea and and so this is like ci lint commits so and the way that this is structured i realize we haven't really touched on this enough um but the the way that the commit message and issue formatting works is meant to be sort of like um your your guide a guide to the directory tree here right so if we say ci and actually this should be probably run ci run and then there's a lint job here um or well i guess there's a lint there's a lint target within the um yeah, within yes. the, Supposed to create a job in the lint section. Yeah. So, in, in if you're looking, yeah, if you look within the the lint of the workflow, then you end up. So, if you go to the workflow and then you look within lint, then you yeah, end up yeah. running here, and then and then you'll run one of these guys. It's like you know, does. Um, so the idea would be, you know, we're at a new one. This the the way that this commit this issue title is formatted implies that you should add a new one here called uh, you know run commits, um, and that would mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Lint, lint the commit messages. Um, Instead of the CI, means can we write a separate test cases for it? We should. Yeah, you know that might be a good idea. Um, so let's see. Well, let's see. Um, let's see. We're getting derailed here. I got I got derailed. Um, so let's just see. Let me put this down and then make sure that we've got everything, and then we'll we'll come back to this. Um, so mm -hmm. let's see. Um, commit message. Formatting CI job. Um, all right. Okay. Anything else on your end? No, so that's it. All right. Great. All right. Let's see. So let's make sure. Um, did we get everybody? Let's see. I think my list has gotten collapsed here. Did we get everybody? All right. I think we got everybody. Did. Uh, speak up if, if I if I if we didn't get you down um, so let's see all right so then 
this is what happens copy paste um, and we start going through them and this will be um, this this gets faster obviously when we when we aren't doing introductions um, uh, excuse me John yeah uh, do you mind if I get back in a few minutes something came up oh yeah no worries so let's just say um, I think keep on the lookout for confidence use cases examples we, we might want to just talk about this offline so you and I can sync um, on Gator or something later um, that all right might be sure. best. cool all right have a good one Hashim also uh, should I answer for Sahil because uh, he's now working on the issue that I was going to work on oh the Orion models yeah 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 uh, I... uh, he, he just wants to know uh, about the video that uh, we discussed uh, this issue in. Okay. Uh, like which video is that? You mean like go? Yeah, yeah. I, okay. yeah I actually gave the link, uh, but uh, he probably doesn't know uh, what he's looking for. Uh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot to search through there. Um, okay. We can we can uh, try to find that for him. Um, cool. Yeah, it's on the it's on the issue. Uh, the link to the video. Okay. Great. And uh, yeah. Cool. Um. So so he'll. Do you have any any? Did you look through the video, or or do you have further questions, or? Uh no, it's just a, a video of me discussing the issue with you. Uh, oh. That's the one. Oh okay okay yeah. great great. Um. So so he'll. Is there anything else you need from Hashim on that, or uh, can I take it from there? Okay. It, it's fine, I guess. All right, great. Cool. All right, well, yeah, uh, we'll let you go, Hashim. Have, have a good one. Thanks, you too. All right. All right, so, and so now, right, so this is exactly what I'm talking about. So now these become sort of offline. Um, All right, um, and then this is offline. So a lot of these PR reviews become offline uh, um, topics um, because, uh, well, you know, they, they, they take they take a while. So um, unless there's any specific things that, that, you know, so we usually do, we usually take PR reviews offline um, unless there's stuff that we've been reviewing several times and, and we're, we're having trouble, um, you know, communicating in a text-based format right then we start we start doing those those in in the meeting um so let's go through and see what's going on here so i think you know the first thing i want to cover here is is this let's just see if anything so that light gbm model um did we rerun the ci on that natash no okay did it or did, uh, did you push that um Let's see. Didn't you were going to push the change log, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Can you push that change log? Do you have Do you have a, a machine in front of you where you can do that? Mm, okay. Just give me a, uh, five to ten minutes. Help. Okay. Oh, and it looks like this is still. Yeah, we need to fix this too. All right. Okay. I'm glad we didn't merge that. Um, so this is the the plugins test. So what is this? Um, I think I think there was an issue uh, in the S two O model. That's why the light GBM is still failing. Something like that. You have said. Let's see. I think I think we now are to the point where they're separate enough. Um, let's see. I think it was you know we had some issues with the the pin depth stuff. Um, so let's see what's going on here. Um, yeah, I think this might be just a rerun case. Let's figure. Let's figure this out. Um, so this. Oh no, this is the same thing. So, what is this? All plugins appear in DFML plugins. Make sure that any set of appear in. Okay. Well, thanks for cutting off the rest of the message. Um, uh, appear in what? So. All right. Well, do we need to fix that? Why is that not? displaying the rest of the message that's annoying all right so this this test here let's pull up this test we can see what the hell's going on 
So get grep. If you guys don't know about get grep, this is this is your new best friend. Um, this is great, and I can't I can't tell you how great get grep is. Um, okay, so make sure that all setup py files associated with a plugin appear in dfml plugins.py so i believe that is the issue with both those prs at the moment is that they both need to show up here um so we just need to add them to this list um in both those prs and then add to the change log as well um and then i think i think we will be good to go other than that yeah uh, great so, oh, and then also, okay, so another thing here is that if these fail, then maybe the, the last place that you have to add them is you have to make sure that they're added in GitHub workflows testing. Um, and so they need to be, it will start to fail the other jobs if they are not in this list as well. So you add it to the plugins list. And so, so try running that C, try running that test locally, um, the set of, set of tests, that test.testci um, and uh, locally. And, and that, that will hopefully, um, you know, bring us to, bring us to a good point here. So, um, okay. So yeah, if we can do that during the, if you can do that right now, then hopefully I can merge them by the end of the meeting here. So, so add um, to dfml slash plugins dot py. Uh, so for both PRs. So add to the plugins and add to dot github dash workflows testing. YAML, and then uh, run python dash m unit test dash v test test dot test ci and uh, to, to validate. Uh, all right, great. Um, I believe that's that. Oh yeah, to change look. All right, um, and let's see, what else do we need to decide whether we're taking offline or not? Um, so PR for cache progress download. Um, we got a lot of PRs right now. Um, so cache progress. Um, where'd you go? It's at the, yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, okay. I remember I just found this. Um, okay, great. Um, did you? Let's see. A couple of CISs are failing. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. LGTM. Um, okay, yeah, we. This one is just like there's there's LGTM is is just a mess right now. We need to go clean it all up at some point. Um, I can't figure out how to turn it off, <laughs> so unfortunately, it keeps failing jobs. Um, So this is an interesting thing. It might be worth talking. It's probably worth talking about for everybody. So, is anybody still using a Conda environment? Is because because yeah. So you'll I know I know you 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 ran this under Conda and it blew up, right? Um, is anybody is anybody still running under Conda under Anaconda anymore? Because um, I know most people have have moved to most packages have moved to releasing on PyPy. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, is, is this, is this Anaconda environment, anything is, is this something that we need to be, be running and testing against and fixing right now? Um, all right. Well, uh, yeah, Sudhanshu. Uh, yes. I feel like, 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 like personally, I don't use Conda. But you think people will? I think I like so. there are people who actually use Conda environments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I do use Conda environments. It's kind of my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. Yeah, that that confirms that. Yeah, people are probably still using Conda. That was a that was that was a, a bold assumption of me to make. Okay. Um. So. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. It's probably just one environment out there. No. All right. So. Um. 
so this the the issue that that was ran into here was um the the, the uh what was it the um yeah oh this is a console test issue because console test attempts to go create a new virtual environment to run some of these tests um and that that blows up um so and console test needs to be split out and refactored at some point um but but for now it'll, it'll stay um but I, so let's see yeah i'll just turn on a rerun and ci test okay so regarding conda support I'm meeting changes. So I think what we need to do is we really need to that console test plugin probably just needs to be get split out of this project and have its own CI um, and its own. It probably just needs to become its own thing. And this is so this is another thing that everybody probably needs to know about. Um, so with regards to the fact that we have a million CI jobs. Um, so this is i mean this is all well and good and, and nice and it allows us to cross validate all the changes from the main repo um into other repos um or sorry it, it allows us to to cross validate all the it allows us to cross validate all the plugins against the main um against the main the main um the main package right because we have this sort of tiered architecture where we have the main project and then we've got all the plugins right so there's this concept we, we want to have this concept of of core or you know first first party um plugins right and those are the things that are maintained within the dffml source code right and so these are things that this is the main package here right so this is the main package um dffml slash dffml um and and this is where you know all our stuff that when you say pip install dfml everything in here gets installed right so that's the main package and now everything else in here so if you go into like model right these are all plugins right and right now they're all maintained as a part of the the the, the code base that is this you know intel slash dffml um and we're thinking you know uh this obviously puts a lot of code in the code base um so we may try to go and uh and and have this approach where we have you know we want we want to also facilitate people hosting their own plugins right you know maybe under their own github usernames so we want to create this space for second party plugins which is sort of plugins that are still maintained by you know us as the community and we're going to try to go fix um but you know aren't necessarily maintained as a part of the main package right so so for example we split out the model transformers um because uh well the ci passed well well, I'll be. Um, we put we split out model transformers because oh, I know why it passed because it has a conflict. We had to upgrade TensorFlow, and then that resulted in us needing to upgrade the um, the APIs. Um, it, we had to upgrade TensorFlow, and then we had to upgrade the 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 APIs of, of Spacey and Model Transformer, and uh, we didn't get around to upgrading Model Transformer before the 4.0 release, um, or the, the 0.4 release. Um, so we we threw it in this this secondary sort of th second party modules, right? So with the hope that we'll get it back in as soon as we have time to upgrade those, those APIs um, or update the, our usage of their APIs, right, with their new new version. Um, and so the idea is, right, we test against the various the various um, uh, versions of DFML. So we'll test against the master branch and we'll test against, you know, whatever the latest release was. Um, and that way we can, uh, you know, maintain all these plugins in a different space. And, and so we'll move to this architecture soon. Um, we just need to go split out all these plugins. And this will also provide it as an example of, of how do you maintain a plugin outside of the tree, right? Um, so... Uh, just something to be aware of that's up upcoming. Um, and why did we start talking about that? Um, oh, well, I can't remember. Um, cache download. Oh, because of of oh because of console test and splitting out console test. So console test will probably go there too. Um, so let's just put a note that that we're going to we'll be splitting out. Um, um, related plugins along so we'll be splitting out plugins along with console test test into dfml github org um we will 
test for, or we will add a Conda uh, CI job uh, there to ensure that Conda support stays active or stays working. Uh, but let's, I don't know, if you want to try to fix it now, great. Otherwise, that's sort of the resolution here is, is we'll make sure it gets and stays fixed, you know, whenever we do that. Um, okay. Um, so the PR on cash download. Uh, da, da, da. And let's see, anything else we need to really talk about here? Um, double CIs. Yeah, so don't worry about that LGTM. Uh, we haven't, we need to go and fix a bunch of stuff to get that working. Okay, and then it looks like you said this passed. Um, uh, Conda support, don't worry about that at the moment. Um, but yeah, go go for it. If you want to fix it, great. Uh, but, you know, we're not going to test for it in the CI until, you know, maybe a, a month or two from now. Um, so regarding TensorFlow model accuracy issue, CI tests fail sometimes. Uh, yeah, that would be great if we could see the tests. Um, uh, well, actually, wait, no, we've gone over this multiple times. Um, we, we have decided not to seed those tests because, um, well, you know, we want to make sure that, that, that if per chance someone changes something, it only happens to work with, you know, the seed in that way, then, uh, then it doesn't, we aren't getting false, false passes in our CI. Um, right. So, so. So the the risk we run of, of just having to rerun the CI jobs is is probably it's it's a bit of an inconvenience, but it doesn't happen that often. It definitely used to happen more often. I thought I, I think at one point we added some retry in there, uh, but yeah, we we we're gonna leave that. Um, so logging module implemented helper function. Okay, great. So let's see. I'll do the rest of this review offline then. Um, unless do you have anything you want to say about that? other than what you've already said. No, uh, I have mentioned all the points that we've discussed already. All right, great. So the Orion model, did you have any more questions on that? Um, did you want it? Is there anything uh, you wanted? I actually just on? read the document. Mm -hmm. No, no, I read the document and I'm, it's pretty clear. If I have any questions, I'll post it. Great. Um, All right, so you follow up with questions as necessary. All right, great. Um, so then, so these PRs, okay, we're probably waiting for the CI, I assume, on those to pass. Um, strip spaces, CSV source PR. Um, so strip spaces, okay. Um, did we do this? No, we didn't do this. Okay, Himanshu, okay, wait. Yeah, I swear I was in the CSV source the other day and I thought we did this. Which this needs to be re, oh, I'm already hacking this up. Um, let's see, that's right now. Okay. Where is, do you remember doing this, Himanshu? I have a vague memory that this got done already and I, um, some, like, I don't want to, uh, maybe not. I don't remember that. It was, oh, the CSV dialect thing. Maybe that's what I was doing. No, strips, skip incidental space. Yeah, this, and this only deals with the spaces at the left-hand side, right? Okay. Not on the right side. Not on the right side. Okay. Yep. Default no strip. Discuss, but uh, we didn't do it. I meant. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Um. Let's just, just uh, and this is just a minor thing, but let's not do unless. Let's not. Let's not add um. Uh, 
let's not add white space where there doesn't need to be white space just because it, it results in um, you know it results in more um, more 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 lines changed and and when we look through things in in this in this format here you know we want to see the least lines changed um, all right cool okay. um, and that's you know not so much for you Nitesh, because I think you know I heard that, but, but for everybody else, um, let's see. So, all right, great. Um, so, and then I think actually let's just, let me just do that right now. I'll just hit commit on this. So, so, and this is what I'm talking about with the pull request or the, the naming. So we do, you know, sort of dig down into the, the directory structure here and we ignore the top level module if the top level module is the main one if it's not the main one when we prefix with what kind of plugin it is um so sort of csv remove uh white space changes all right um and then okay now it's this and let's see so we'll wait we'll just double check that that i didn't screw up the style anyhow and then we'll we'll wait for that to merge so all right so looks good thanks um okay um uh great okay so And then let's see. So, what else we got here? So, PR find Dart's model plugin. Okay, so. All right, great. We're working through this pretty quick. All right. Um, so, these PRs on the in out channels. Um, Where'd those go? There we go. Okay, so so critique. Um, all right. Okay, so I'm thinking here that this is something that object object has no attribute to. Okay, and so Saksham says it's working. Cleaning the branch only have required changes might resolve it. So. It's not working on my system. It's not working on your system, okay. So, let's take a look here. Yeah. So, uh, it shouldn't I mean, be changed. Actually, the, this was an example. It was in the example of PyTorch. So, uh, uh, our class was there. I just refracted the code a bit to use the NN sequential models. Okay. So I think that um, you know, I think that that it might be good to just create a new example for this. You know, if you if you don't want to lose these changes, then creating a new example file would be a good approach here. And this this type of thing with the um, you know this 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 is the type of thing where um, sort of yeah yeah so sorry one thing at a time i would create a new example file that contains these changes and that way you don't lose your work you know um mm -hmm. and uh and do that as a separate pull request um anyway, that was not related to this issue so i just changed a bit yeah yeah so so and that's and that's kind of i think what sakshan is trying to say is that you know mm -hmm. we yeah, exactly. yeah we, we want to keep keep related changes together so let's try to changed it what uh means it was better to keep that original ones instead of changing the examples yeah yeah so unless there's a specific reason to change the examples mm -hmm. it's always good to add exactly. more to examples more examples is great we, we want that especially since you've already done it um if you could just throw it in another file and, and then make sure that there's something that's testing it then we we definitely want that um but yeah let's try to keep it um you know um we'll try to keep keep it as it exists right now um for the purposes mm -hmm. of just doing this change right um, and okay, and the main function which I created to uh, convert the dict into the sequential model was 
that create network function just a bit i think yeah and uh and the function which we had previously that is create layers i guess uh it was actually not accepting the dict objects means that function was not being called actually okay um No, not the about page. Why is the about page first here? Okay. All right. So let's go into code cub and, and, and just double check what's going on. Yeah. No, no, no. Because this, this will give us a for sure on, on whether this is being called or not. Okay. Um, this is a good, good resource to, to go over here. So. Uh, da -da. Um, what we were at 90%. When the hell was that? Oh, oh, April 2019. Okay, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> let's go back. Um, no, let's not go back. Okay, um, all right, so let's see polls. So we can take a look at missing base report, missing base report four days ago, and what PR is this? 22. So where's PR? 22, 22. All right, great. Okay, so we have a report here. Um, oh, no, you know, this isn't measuring the... Okay, this is another thing that we really need to do is... Oh, we're not measuring the plugins. Um, and that will also be something that's splitting out the... Uh, splitting out mm -hmm. those those projects into, into their own projects will make that a lot easier yeah. to measure. Um, okay. Um, all right. Uh, You know, okay, is there anything specific? Because if there's nothing sort of specific um, here, I'm going to let Sakshom continue being your reviewer on this. Um, is there anything specific that, that you want to call out right now? or? Yes, uh, specifically in the sense, uh, the previous, the actually there was an issue regarding this peer. Means one issue was there, ki, in the uh, convolutional models, the input layers of a con convolutional layer will take the would be same as the output of the previous convolutional. Ah, uh, yeah, this guy, right? This is the issue we were addressing initially, exactly. right? Uh, so basically, I did this uh, using by taking some test cases mm -hmm. where we are actually missing out some of the input layers of the input parameters of the uh, I think yes in this in this test cases if you uh, look in the convolutional layer 2 of the in channels it is none okay yeah so it it should take uh, the parameters from the convolution output features of the convolutional layer in the make in the just which is just above it uh yeah i mean so this is yeah that's the that's the issue um mm -hmm. i i guess also you know yeah. this would be there's no key here right not just there's no value yeah. but the key is not present yeah. you know should be accounted for in, in the code so basically the function which i created of create network was basically handling all these stuffs okay and also creating the uh nn model from the uh, YML file like that. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, okay. Oh, and that's what Sakshom said here. Is, I guess, so I'm not really up to date on this and I'm, I'm kind of having trouble understanding what, um, what, if, if there's, anything that we really need do is there anything that we really need to discuss here in this meeting or do you think you can you can continue this with Saksham? i think i can continue this with Saksham also okay great uh, mainly he has worked i saw he has worked on all this yeah he's 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 you know this is this is mm -hmm. his uh you know his implementation here so he's, his project last year 
yeah so he's he's got a lot more you know he's already reviewing this and mm -hmm. and you know i i would have to go get up to speed on on what this review is you know and i can't i, we, we, mm -hmm. I don't have time to do that right now right um so mm -hmm. so let's just let him take that and then if if you know you guys if you guys need some more um you know if you need some more input then then pull me in okay um but yeah i don't think sakshan is not here today so uh, we'll just leave that as an offline so offline um Sakshan uh, will continue his review. Um, so yeah, just just that sounds good. All right, okay. So in this XLS source, this yeah. this one is definitely going offline too. Um, let's see. So um, unless, do you want to give me a little brief overview of what's going on? Oh, yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. Let me just say one thing about this first. So um, this yeah, so load. Load FD and dump FD is not the appropriate um, implementation for this. Um, so, because you don't know, let's see, we don't, okay, this load workbook function, um, this, can you do it? Okay, yeah, so that's the file itself. Mm -hmm. um, we load fd and dump fd are meant to work with file descriptors not not the names of the file so if we can if we can read the data of the file and then you know and then load load it direct so where is the damn this is really weird documentation oh that was done by dump fd one means what uh, writing in self dot mem variable uh oh well okay so so the usage that you have you know what what you've done here where you've uh you know this this stuff looks mm -hmm. you know it, it looks i haven't i haven't uh, my cursory glance at it looks like this this makes sense right um because what you're doing is you're trying to create record classes where the features are you know exactly. yeah you map the columns um obviously this i mean it looks it looks correct but i'm looking at it for half a second so um if this passes yeah this i mean this is what you're looking for here right so um the thing is the main thing is let's see load fd and what do we have here we have it again okay so we got to remove this file right so because we have a duplicate file here um uh, let's see. And then this guy, great. You put that in there. Um, so yeah, I think the main thing here is you want to, if you're going to do this, if you're going to do this load FD dump FD approach, mm -hmm. you need to read the data out of the file itself, um, rather than, mm -hmm. than um, oh. This. Actually, if we uh, train some data using a CSV, right? So we would actually extract its uh, column as record features, and then we would actually pass to that uh, class XLS. Sorry, can you say that again? Means if we suppose we are training a model by taking input from the CSV, okay, then we could extract each and every row of it as a record mm -hmm. uh, and then we could further call that dump every uh, kind of function inside the xls class so that could also uh, perform means do the job um let's see are you talking about like dumping csv to um to um, uh, taking CSV files and dumping them to Excel files? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that, oh, this is the data flow merge command. I think we need to document the regular merge command. So we have a merge command. All right, well, let's put an issue for this. Um, where's that merge command? Nope, no, nope, I guess it got, oh, we got rid of the docs for that at some point because um, we had to change the syntax. Mm -hmm. But we do have a command to do that. Um, so diff mel merge or yeah. 
So this command here will merge uh, two data sets, and and so basically you can you can take one that's one that's empty. You you can take the source as a CSV file and the destination as this empty Excel file, and you'll take a CSV file and you would convert it to an Excel file effectively, because you would do load FD would happen from the CSV file and dump FD would would happen to the you know you'd end up calling that sequence like you just talked about. Um, so. Mm -hmm. The main thing here is that we need to figure out how do we save, how do we, how do we, you need to figure out how do we use this uh, Excel library to write out, you know, a bunch of bytes um, instead of, instead of um, the actual, you know, you make, making it work with the file, um, the file name. Uh, because these load FD and dump FD are supposed to work on file descriptors and mm -hmm. the file descriptor. So where is that test? Um, test XLS records. Okay. Um, so I believe we have a, what is it called? Um, file source test. Where's that file source test? Yeah. All right. So these guys. So the file source also does some stuff where it will support um, compressed files. Um, and so if we, let's see, test key, test config set. Okay. Now this is all CSV specific. Um, CSV source. Okay. Um, where is this? All right. So this guy. Um, Mm -hmm. So this, no, this is the source test. Okay, and then file source test. So and this, so this file source test basically goes through and it says, all right, try to compress this file type, and make sure that that your your source works. Um, you know, if if it's reading from one of these compressed files that's getting unpacked or repacked um, by the by the abstraction provided by the file source. Um, and what you'll notice when that when you apply this this file source test, um, mm -hmm. and we need to get rid of that test tag, um, but you'll notice that it'll blow up um, when you have that that FD dot name because the name property won't exist um, on these compressed versions of the files. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, FD dot name was being passed to the Open XLS API of Python. Um, say what? Can you say that again? That means FD dot name was passed to the Open XLS API. Uh, yeah, I know, and that's what I'm saying is that we don't want to do that um, because we don't want to end up in the situation where where you where you have a compressed file, and then because when you so when you have this compressed file here, so if you're subclassing from the file source, um, mm -hmm. you'll end up in a situation where um, this is the open um, that happens to open the file, so it looks for the the file right, and this is the allow where allow empty comes in. Um, and then it says, okay, is this compressed file? Then if it is compressed, then I'm going to do this, you know, read mode compressed. Um, and then you're going to end up with, you know, this opener. Um, and the opener uh, is, so for example, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, gzip compressed, right? So this, when you call gzip.open on this file name, that mm -hmm. may not have a dot .name attribute. So if you have dot .xls dot .gz, then you're going to end up with opener. You're going to put, you're effectively have opener is FD because you're doing with opener as FD and then you're doing FD.name and it's going to tell you, well, opener has no name attribute. Um, and so for that reason, we really want to make sure that we're, we're, um, we're able to read, read and write bytes, um, you know, bytes of that file. Uh, does that make sense? Okay, got it. Means we should not have open dot fd, right? Uh, well, so we don't want to use fd dot name because fd dot name. So, so we we want to just use fd dot read and fd dot write. Um, and and so if we take a look at the um, let's see, examples tutorials. Okay, sources. 
where is this guy? So read file, for example, right? So so this reads that 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 file object, that file descriptor, right? And and, and it doesn't reference it by the name. And when we would be passing some dot zip extension file, that uh, means uh, dot name of parameter would not be present in that case. Right? Exactly. Yeah, we we can't get we we aren't guaranteed the presence of that dot name property on that that file file object. Um, so we what we'd like to do is we we'd like to understand you know is there a way that we can have this workbook um so workbook dot save where is that let's say workbook so if we look at the api documentation here um and we looked at workbook dot save and it says okay so save the workbook to a given file name use this function so yeah exactly that was a file name here Mm -hmm. That's why I did fd dot name, and also for open stuff, there also it was taking file dot fd dot name as a parameter. Yeah. So the question is, is there a way to use this in such a way that you can? Um... Uh, means we are not. Oh, I think the load fd and dump fd we are overriding from the base classes, right? Yeah. So, so uh, means if we are having a dot csv file so then the overrided function will run that is in that cases we will run the uh, csv classes fd mm -hmm. then i don't think there will be an issue in that case well so i yeah but we're only talking about the excel source at this time right we're talking about the excel source right now and the excel source you know it it will so 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 there's a so there's an easy okay you you see what i'm saying about if you open in a compressed file it won't have a name attribute right yeah that won't have a name attribute yeah okay so what what and and i think part of this is you know it'd be good if we let's see so if we subclass, if you had subclass from file source test, you would have you would have seen this immediately. But I don't think, or we we're not mentioning file source test here. Yeah, no, we're not. All right, so that's which is why you didn't, which is why you didn't see that. So um, makes sense. Um, but it's just something something to to consider here because we ran into this we ran into this at some point before, and that's why I'm trying to head it off. Um, so uh, which is how we ended up with that test case. Um, so. If there's a workaround to this, which is you can create a temporary file, um, so or we can just basically exclude the usage of ex of file extensions. So let's let's see let's see what what's going on here. So so and you see what I'm saying, right? So you know we can either say um, you know don't allow file extensions opening um, with with this Excel file. Um, with the Excel source, right? So we could say we'd maybe yeah. add something here that says, you know, if um, um, if it is of XLS format, I would call that class something like that. Uh, if it's well, so I'm saying that we need this code here not to run. Um, you know, unless, unless, uh, so we need some sort of like allow list here to say, you know, compression allowed or something. Um, so, mm -hmm. and then we'd put our, you know, list of, of, of extensions, right. Um, and that are allowed. And so we could specify, we could override this property within the XLS source, um, to be an empty list, right? And now we aren't we aren't allowing compression. Um, so, uh, so I guess yeah, you know, this is the type of thing where where we'd say, um, you know, if um, if uh, you know, we yeah, we'd yeah. add this here, right? And we'd say, you know, if the suffix is this and the suffix is in, uh, you know in self dot compressed compression allowed then then we open it right um otherwise we just try to open it and it'll explode um or i guess maybe we need to do some validation there maybe that that's probably beyond the scope of this um 
let's add you know what we should do right now is we should probably just take this and make an issue out of it um because if somebody if somebody blows up on the if somebody tries to do a compressed file and it blows up then they'll they'll end up with an issue anyways so, so why don't you why don't you go through and um why don't you just make an issue for this and to track this right uh and then you can put it to do here and say um, you know, I, 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 you can put it to do in the code and reference the issue. And that way, you know, it's at least documented that, that that's not going to work. Right. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. Um, so let's see, we'll create an issue to, uh, either support or, um, uh, uh, raise a helpful error message if uh, compression suffix is on dot after dot xls uh, or file name. Um, Okay, um, so Peter, uh, reference issue in to do comment within the code above usage of uh, FD dot name. Anyway, that way, that way, at least we know we know we know that things are going to blow up, right? Um, mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so let's see. So we'll do this offline with Sok. This is Sok Sham. This is offline. Um, so, um, and then let's see. So PR for insecure hash functions. Okay. So, all right. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of people uh, in this meeting. So is this an hour earlier or later than everybody else is used to? Actually, for me, it's. I think this works. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, sure. Yes. Get it. You are saying that. No, no, no. Uh, I was saying that both times are fine for me. Uh, like, whatever people find convenient is good for okay. me. Okay. For me, it's worth uh, somewhere in the middle of dinner time. So that's why I'm asking you. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Because we can move this. We can move yeah, this yeah. an hour later if that uh, we can start sort of, you know, what would be 30 minutes ago um, going forward if that if that's better for people. Um, okay. Uh, for now, it's it's okay because okay. Uh, it's 9.30, no? right? Okay. Yeah, just let me just so so let me put that as an open too. So let me know on the meeting timing if, if this if because I can I can easily move this meeting. Um, later, um, I can't move it earlier because I have another meeting before it. But we can move it an hour later if that if that fixes whatever time zone issue happened there. Um, so meeting. Um, uh, so post on Gitter if you want the meeting to stay at this time or move an hour later. And we may go back to our two meetings a week situation um, if we continue to have this many people, because obviously this is not uh, a yeah, sustainable I think two meetings, would be, two meetings should be there. Yeah. So many issues. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, I don't want to burn you guys out, I'm sure. This is it's a long time to be in a meeting. Um, all right, OK, so let's, let's get to um, Okay, I'm looking at the rest of these, and we're going to be here for a while. I think if we if we do all of these, so we're at the time for this meeting. So let's let's pick up. Is there anything that anybody is blocked on immediately, um, and and needs to be addressed immediately? Otherwise, we're going to schedule a meeting for uh, later in the week, um, and uh, and 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 we'll figure it out from there. Um, so, does anybody have anything that that they are immediately blocked on right now? Um, that, that pre prevents them from, from pro progressing within the next few days? That's on this list. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Uh, can you show me how to run the uh, ex Python example for HTTP service? Right? 
Oh, yes. Great. Okay, good. I'm this is exactly the type of thing. <laughs> it's exactly the type of thing. That... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. No worries. The HTTP service. Um, okay, so, and, and that's something that Sutanshu and I had talked about recently. We want to try to refactor um, that, 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 that service code. Um, so, all right. Okay, so let's see. Service HTTP. All right, so, and, and what, what, so let's let's go to the documentation. Okay, so and, and let's go to some uh, how to run HTTP service. And I think somebody else was looking at this too. Okay, so the docs for the HTTP API. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is the this is the main example here. And so, what are you talking about? The Python example here. Is this the yeah. one that you're mainly concerned with? Oh Let's yeah, this is not going to work. Um, uh, I have I have made the changes accordingly, right? So for me, it's uh, it's running. But uh, how to run the example or the uh, training part on the HTTP API? That's what I'm asking. How to run the training part on the HTTP API? Okay. So yeah, I forgot yeah. that this is not gonna. This code <laughs> needs to have this stuff taken out of it. I can't remember how we got that in there. Probably weird formatting thing. Um, okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay. So how do we how do we use a model from the HTTP API? Okay. Um, that was your question. You wanna you wanna use a model? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And do you wanna configure the model as well? Oh uh, yes. Okay. So. The configuration, so essentially the flow is, you know, it, okay, actually it's listed in the form of the flow, great. Um, so the, the flow is configure a model, create a context, and then, you know, use the model, right? So the first step here is we configure the model. Let me just pull these up side by side. We'll just hack it, hack this together. Um, okay. Um, um, all right, so let's do examples. Where's that Python example coming from? Uh, source dot. Okay. Uh, oh, that's what's going on. We have this giant code block. Okay, yeah, no wonder this is formatted funkily. Okay, I think we probably, I can't remember what we did. All right, um, so let's just take this and let's just write this. Um, all right. Oh. All right. Um, So this is this tool that I use. If you guys haven't seen this, NodeMon, this is great. It runs things on file change. Um, you probably all, most of you have probably heard me harp about how great it is a million times. Um, so you get this rapid, rapid, rapid build and test cycle. So we're going to run the um, uh, diffml util console test or testing console test, um, and we're going to run it on this example file set docs slash Python to RST, I believe. Okay. Um, and what file is this? Okay, yeah, right. So, uh, so we're gonna read in this. Um, this is index. Okay. So. This is also a short demo of how to write console test stuff. So this is basically, um, so with console test, you basically, you put your regular documentation here with code block console and you put the little test option on it. And so now it's gonna start this um, and it's gonna start it, you know, as in test mode. Um, and so then we're gonna say it's a daemon. So a daemon is a running background process and it's running on port 8080. Um, all right, so uh, then let's see. Then we need this code, okay. So, and we don't really need, okay, so yeah, linear regression model. Let me indent all this. 
one because I think it was not indented. All right, so then we can also put a file path to write this stuff out to. Um, and the file path would be, you know, uh, client.py. Um, so this is our client file. Um, and then, and we usually try to prefix when we're writing documentation and examples, we try to put in bold what the file name we're writing is. So we we'll say first, uh, start the server. Um, and then we're going to configure the model and then we'll create the model context. Um, so, so we configure the model. Um, Actually, let's make these separate files. Um, and we're just going to use URL lib because that's built in. OK, so we'll configure the model. And ooh, the problem with this is we can't format with black. Oh, well. All right, so 8080. Um, do we have replacement functionality in here? Uh, maybe we don't. All right, um, we will just run it. OK. All right, so we're going to just write this little thing. And it's this little snippet of Python code that configures the model, right? And it'll take the URL here of the of the server. Um, and we'll say, you know, uh, endpoint. So endpoint is a way that, you know, we might commonly refer to uh, a, a server that we're, we're running against. Um, so the URL or the URL of the server uh, so this is the URL that the HTTP service is running on. Um, and so that would be, you know, for example, um, you know, just the base part. So HTTP in this example. So this is the local URL and then 8080, um, you know, but the, the thing that's going to happen here is when we run this example, it's going to bind this, uh, the service to run on a random port uh, because you know we don't want we want our examples to always choose a random port in case that port is already in use. Uh, so we'll just say okay, grab the endpoint from the the argument there um, and configure the model. So um, so let's see URL. Okay, yeah. So the URL would be and we'll use the uh, this new style of formatting. It's f string string stuff is fun all right so and we can say url lib request dot uh, url open um and there is the um that's the and i think we actually need to create a request object here um url lib url lib dot request dot request and we'll give it the URL to go to as the first parameter. And then I think we need headers. Um, and we can make that a dictionary. And don't stop indenting two spaces. So yeah, we'll leave this open for the docs. Uh, pi. Uh, we want URL lib. So this is how I use duck, 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 go. Uh, it lets you do this bang. Uh, you can do uh, exclamation point pi and then it'll search the um, python documentation for you huge time saver um all right so where are we so here's the request url data headers great um do we need any headers we uh, I, you know i think it might work without headers we'll try it without headers uh is data additional data send all right, file like objects, bytes. All right, so we can say data equals, um, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, this guy. So basically, and this is this is basically gotten from this configure documentation. So, so we said configure, this is how we're reading these docs, right? So we say, okay, here's the model, right, that, that we're wanting to configure here. Um, 
and uh, okay it looks like this is taken directly from that example so it should be good um, so we will grab this as the data and so this is this is uh, directly from that example there um, okay yeah um, Okay, and is there another level there needed or no? Okay, we're just using multiple levels of an annotation. Great. Um, all right, okay, yeah, so we grab the endpoint, we make the request with URL open. So if you look at the documentation for request, it takes this uh, URL or it says URL, which can be either a string or a request object. Oh, okay, I guess we can specify data there. Um, so we can just do this. Um, Data equals dot model config. All right. Um, let's just make sure that that is correct there. Yeah. And we post that. All right. So we should be able to post this here, and we will have configured a model. Um, oh, we're supposed to. That's why. All right. So the URL, the data, and then we want to just basically read this response. So. And we'll just do this because you know we don't we don't really need to do anything with this response here. We're just going to read it and uh, display it for our own edge vacation. Um, and there's the next code block. <clears throat> All right, so then we run it, and so we need a code block console and test it. And say Python, you know, configure.py. All right, great. Um, uh, oh, is the HTTP service not installed? Uh, something's mad. Stiffmel service HTTP. We'll just uh, real quick get rid of anything that might be laying around there and reinstall it. And that e dash e is installed in development mode. Oh God, what happened here? Permission denied. Oh yeah, this is a. Uh... Do we not have an up-to-date version of pip? What's going on? Okay. Okay, yeah, there's something weird about my environment right now, but we'll we'll see what happens here. There we go. Model is not confined. Oh, okay, yeah. We <laughs> All right, great. So it's running the test now. Um, so you see over here, it's uh, we said you know run run the console test plugin against this restructured text file. So it started that daemon and it started it on this random port here, um, and then. Um, you know, we wrote out this file, this configure.py, and this is the contents. And then, you know, we ran the file, and I forgot to pass the URL. Um, so we're going to do a, uh, let's see, where is that? Um, you know, we want to pass, let's see. And this 127.0.01 is, is the local address. Um, and we're going to go ahead and, and we're actually going to do a, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so, um, okay. 
So I need to, we need to go ahead and replace the random port that's been allocated. Um, so we say, okay, on the com list of commands that I'm about to run, replace the last argument, which is negative one of the first commands and replace the port that says, or replace the string 8080 with the, with the port of the running server, which is, uh, you know, the server that we started up here. All of this is in that console test documentation and, and it's in the rest of the documentation. So that, that will actually run, you know, run this command with that, that server. So we need to go and replace the model though. So our model, and then maybe we should go and add these here. So model and label, um, so in point, um, so label would be, let's see, what is the label? Okay, my model, right, okay. So, all right, so, oops. So we said endpoint. Negative three. And so then the model type would be, let's just do SLR um, because that one's built in. Um, and then we'll say, you know, my model. And we ran it and I didn't change the rest of the code, of course. And null is not a valid Python identifier. Um, model label. Okay. Unhashable type dict. Oh yeah, we have to encode this. So we need to do a JSON dot dumps. Um, and then we got to do, uh, you know, we got to encode that. So encode, uh, because it, it takes a raw, raw bytes. Well, that would help if we imported JSON. Okay, now you're just lying. Unhash will type dict. Print URL open, JSON dumps. Oh, because this is, okay, we don't need that. Four oh three forbidden. Oh, this is because of my stupid machine here. For some reason they have a, okay, let me put it as localhost. For some reason on this machine, I don't know what's going on. It doesn't like it when you do that. 404 not found. All right, post configure. Okay, it doesn't like the double slash, I think. Four hundred bad request. All right, okay, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> um, so then the next thing that we want to do is we can add logging to this so we can see, you know, I'm just gonna go through the configure one because we're you know, we're ways over time here. So there, there's the log. Okay, so logging is on. And it said 400 bad request. Okay, and here we get a message from the server that says missing predict. Um, oh, yeah, and so we are. Exactly. I'm also getting a 400 bad request. Right? And that's because of AIO HTTP dot HTTP exceptions, bad status line. Bad status line? Yeah. Uh, mm, that's an interesting one. Um, bad status line. Uh, what? How are you making the request? I guess, well, you can change it to make it, to make the request like this because that's a, uh, Mm -hmm. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's not good. Um, oh, and this hasn't been updated, or it has, so let's see. My model. Okay, so predict, and we want you to predict, okay, this is SLR, so this is, should just be Y. Let's just have this be X and Y. Bad status line means there's something wrong with your HTTP, uh, client. 
Um, bad request. Um, what does it say? Yeah, I would yeah, try and making. The, uh, yes, yes. And the client side, I'm getting an error that SSL error, right? SSL error. Okay, yeah. And that, well, that's because you're requesting, that's because you have mismatched insecure and HTTPS. So you'll notice this is HTTP, right? You need to be doing HTTP if you started the server with insecure. Um, and if you didn't start the in server with insecure, then you need to make sure that you, well, you won't be able to start it because it'll give you a bunch of errors. Um, but if you started it with insecure, you read the security docs if you want to start it securely. If you started it with insecure, then you need to make sure that you're making an HTTP request rather than an HTTPS request uh, because that's gonna, what's going to be giving you the bad status line because it's sending a bunch yeah. of garbled encrypted stuff and it's then it's that you know it doesn't read that as you know uh you know a, a, a post whatever right which is what it should be so and this is getting mad about what again you know, it's a predict so uh missing predict from model my model okay so model yeah okay this stuff is uh well okay where is so we can also reference the tests here so let's reference the tests because we need to see what's going on uh, all right, so test model, and this is configure. All right, so when we're doing this here, we say, um, okay, I guess we're just posting that. Okay, JSON equals config, um, model predict, model directory, model features. Um, predict. Oh, it's because this is now formatted in the, uh, yeah, we need to, so it has to be formatted in this, and this is that unified config thing that we're always talking about, is this format, we've got this config format that allows us to, um, that allows us to, um, internal server, oh, wonderful, um, that, that allows us to configure things on the ticked object has no HP count. Oh, okay, so it's not doing that properly. So it's not, okay. Yeah, that's not good either. So, um, well, we found a bug. So this is the unified, unified config stuff. Like the, the main problems that we're having with this is that this, uh, we need to, we need to, um, we need to go through and, and uh, make it so that that all of this stuff gets gets configured the same way, right? And so we have we have this plugin config, plugin config, and so when you have an instantiatable object that has those config structures that you've seen, then it ends up pulling from this config, and then it pulls the information from the the prop the plugin property of like you know what to put there, and that's directly because of. Um, it's directly because of the fact that, you know, when we have this hyphen model, hyphen directory, um, you might have hyphen model, right? And then you would say, you know, what the model is, and then you need to be able to go in underneath that, right? And if you just had model and then what the model was, then you can't obviously use that as like a sub key. Um, so we've got that, that's why that structure exists. Um, why this thing is not being cooperative, um, I don't, I don't know, that's another, that's a mystery to me. Um, but we need to, we need to hunt down this bug too, cause I don't know what's going on here. Um, the, the tests are obviously passing, so there's something else happening that's weird. It's trying to instantiate, okay, there we go. So now we have instantiate the, 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 the config. Um, it's trying, it was trying to, to, it wasn't calling the from dict method, which is the way that these things should be working. Um, and that's, all of that feeds into that you know, we need to go figure out this unified config stuff. Um, and Saksham and I have been working on that. Um, so that, that'll, that'll get done eventually. Um, but you know, until then we got to work around some bugs. Um, but so, yeah, that's how you configure. And then, you know, it'll be, it's pretty much a, a similar process from there. Um, the context creation, what is that? Yeah. Is that, do you even need to post? Yeah. You can just do a git. So you could just do, um, well now it's trivial. 
So then you create a context and then you, you know, train the model. So you need to also, I think the JavaScript example is still up to date. Or, Sutanchio, did you run the JavaScript example? Did that work? Uh, in the JavaScript example, the scorer part might not work. Okay, but, but, but without the scorer, right? Yes, it should work fine. Okay, so you might want to reference the JavaScript example because that'll have, um, that'll have, you know, uh, like how you, you know, that, 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 that has examples on that. I think the requests are, are correct for that one. Um, so, okay. yeah. Um, and then I think this is just, uh, let's see, so my model and then my context. Um, and find label, so. And this will create the context. And then the other thing is that you need to figure out how to do the instantiate the source and stuff. The problem is, the thing is, like, we need to do a refactor of this. I guess if you're getting into this, you could do the refactor. That would be helpful. Um, but we need Sutanshu's stuff to go in first because there's just too many changes that happen otherwise at the same time, resulting in giant merge conflicts. So it's probably best to do one and then the other. Um, so, um, but if you wanted to get in here and get familiar with that, then that would be good. Okay, and now we've created the context. Um, so, okay, great. Um, and it got a temporary directory. So, you know, and then, then the final step here is, you know, use the model, right? So where is you know, model context, um, train, okay, and then you pass it the, the data set itself. Uh, and so this is where it gets annoying because you have to actually go instantiate a data set, and that's the stuff that that JavaScript example might be also helpful for, so you can copy the syntax there. Um, so uh, let's see, train the model, my training data set, yeah, okay, and this didn't, this didn't actually include the, the, the data set itself. So you got to go do the same thing for the source. And so we instantiated a model and then we created a context. And now you have to go create a source and create a source context before you can do train. And where you post this is the request body where you reference the source label. Um, and this is all what needs to change because obviously you should just be able to sort of post the whole config all in one and do it there. Um, but you know, it wasn't, wasn't what we did when we did it. Um, so, cause we were trying to, we, we also want to provide direct access, you know, uh, the idea behind all of this with the Python library and the command line library and, and the HTTP services to provide the exact same interfaces so you could do the same thing across them. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't need to have more helper methods, right? So we don't have to do so many requests. Um, and so that's where the refactoring will come into play. But all right, so I'm gonna post this code here um, and I will post you know, what I use to run it. Um, um, and this is sort of you know something that, that we'd uh, uh, this is yeah, a little little console test example here. Um, and uh, then we will call this a meeting. So I'll probably try to schedule a meeting for maybe Thursday. Um, we'll try to do so same time two days from now. Um, uh, but but we'll 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 play it by ear um, and, and let me know. So let me know if Thursday is a good a good day for you all. Um, if not, then um, we can do Friday. But you know, I hesitate to, to schedule Friday Friday meetings because uh, that would be Friday evening your guys' time, I believe. I know that's what we had last year, but um, also you know, nobody's really <laughs> no, none of us are doing anything right now. I would assume um, there's uh, you know still coronavirus going on where everyone else is um so you know i, I understand if, if no one cares about friday meeting um i think that's actually what happened last year too that's how we ended up with a friday meeting um but uh you know let me know whether you want thursday or friday or, or another day um you know i want to avoid doing it on the weekends um but uh, yeah cool so i'm gonna post this uh and then i we will call it a day thanks everyone have a good one and uh, Thank you. just uh, contact on Gitter. Cool. Thanks. Bye. Nice meeting you all. Thank you.